Good morning. Uh, I want to start today by asking a question. I wonder, do you have a favourite day of the month? It's a weird question, I know, but I reckon if you took a survey of 100 people in Cardiff, you'd start to notice a trend. What's their favourite day of the month? That's payday. Uh, for those who don't know, I work in an office in town, and town centre seems to be most alive, most excited, buzzing on the last Friday of the month. Well, why is that? On a really practical level, people have got money again. They can do the things that they want. But I actually think there's something deeper at work. Payday is a depiction of a message that we've all learned since childhood. And that message is this. If you want something, you have to earn it. And payday is the day when people are finally receiving the reward for which they've been working. As a child, you seek to earn your parents' affirmation. In school, you earn your grade based on your study. In sports, you earn a spot in the first team by your athleticism. In work, you trade your time and commitment for a paycheck or even a promotion. And this worldview of earning has seeped throughout morality and philosophy. Countless religions spout a belief system based on the idea that you have to earn a reward. But the Bible turns that message on its head and declares that we are saved by God's grace alone. And more than that, we're not just saved, but we're brought into God's family. And I think part of the Christian walk is us unlearning that basic principle of earning a reward and just accepting grace. This morning, we're going to look at Galatians chapter four. To quickly put this letter in context, Paul is writing to the Galatian church who have let themselves been drawn into a false gospel that stated Christ wasn't enough and that the, uh, the Christians there had to keep the old law in order to be saved. Uh, it was a message of Christ plus works equals salvation. So Paul is seeking to set the record straight throughout this letter. Uh, and in doing so, we're reminded of some comforting truths. Paul now begins to refer to Christians as adopted children of God. Now that sounds like a mental claim. It sounds way too intimate to be real. Uh, and it can be hard to believe. How can we be sure that our status as adopted children is secure? That's what I want us to ask this morning. We're going to answer that question by looking at Galatians chapter 4. Firstly, our status as children of God is secure because our salvation was designed and completely orchestrated by God. Look at verses 1 to 5. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of this world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. In verses one and two, Paul is painting a picture of an heir destined to inherit a great fortune, but will not come into that inheritance until the day they come of age. Now, when they're young, their life, it might not look very promising. Uh, they'll have guardians and people in authority over them uh, telling them what to do. But even though their early years might not look promising or even hopeful, their future is secure because the father had written it in his will. He'd written that they would come into their inheritance at a certain time. That child is an heir, assured of their inheritance long before they entered into it. Verse 3 explains that in the same way we were once held captive, by the principles, the common beliefs of this world, a mindset of works. But at the God-appointed time, Christ came in full humanity under the same requirements of the law to provide us with a way of redemption. Just like that child, our inheritance uh, was never in question because God's plan for our redemption has always been secure. 
2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 puts it like this. God saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our saviour, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We are safe as children in God because he has chosen you to receive that blessing before you were born. Secondly, our status as children of God is secure because we've now been given a spirit that cries out to God as Father. Verses 6 and 7. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. God's eternal plan was never simply to stop at paying our sinful debt, even though that in itself would be great. But his plan was and is greater and more intimate than that. In the same way that God sent Christ to cancel our debts, God sends the spirit into our hearts to bind us to him, drawing us closer to him, giving us a desire for him. No longer is God just the righteous judge to us, but he becomes God the loving father who adopts us into his family. This spirit that we're given can can give us the confidence to call him our Abba Father. If you're not familiar with that language, it's intimate. It's it's that. Um, It's an intimate way to call God your Father. And we see through the Bible that this is a father, this is a dad who who always has time to hear us in prayer. A dad from whom, actually, we can't hide anything. He sees us completely, warts and all, and yet he loves us the same. And my surname uh, is Williams. Uh, Nothing I do or say can change the fact I'm a Williams. It's just who I am. If you know Christ as your saviour, nothing can change the fact that you're an adopted child of God. It's simply who you are, by God's grace alone. So then, favourite day of the month? Forget payday. For us, it's adoption day. 